Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We're in episode five of our series on, on GI pathologies. And, and this time we're gonna really talk about the serious pathology side, Adam. Uh, everything up until now has been kind of leading toward, you know, what's, what's the most you know, serious thing that you can deal with. And if you let these symptoms and these problems progress, you can end up with, with ulcerative colitis or colitis or even something like toxic megacolon. Uh, everybody likes to talk about Crohn's disease and celiac and things like that, that everybody thinks they have gluten intolerance. But I wanna, I wanna talk about what these really mean and, and when you may or may not want to seek some attention. So everything that we talked about with eliminating certain foods and, and trying things to try and get rid of those symptoms, uh, what if they don't, just don't go away? What, what if you just cannot shake that? Then, then obviously our stance is gonna be go to your doctor. Your, your family doctor is probably going to refer you pretty quickly to a gastroenterologist. And, and, you know, I don't think everybody just reflexively starts scoping people from end to end, but they're going to they're gonna at least, you know, put you on the radar, look at some things, and, and maybe run some tests. And you can end up having some serious food allergies. You, you may be one of the few people who really does have a true, you know, celiac issue or Crohn's disease type, type condition. And that lead, that, that is an inflammation of the small intestine. And so all of a sudden now those, those tissues are going to be so inflamed that you do have malabsorption issues. And, you know, some of the terms thrown around are like leaky gut syndrome where there's extra permeability. Um, you know, that can be one, one issue. And, and then your sedimentation rates go up. You're, you're literally getting, you know, microbial, um, you know, crossover contamination in your bloodstream, you know, is a, is a possibility. But this is, this is where you really do have to, you know, just, just bite the bullet, go to the doctor and see that there's an issue, even though that's very difficult for me to say, because I don't like to, to just send people running to the doctor every time they think there's something wrong. But have you, Adam, seen somebody that was just having some issues and, and they wouldn't resolve, and then they really did find out they had a, a big issue to tackle? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot that can happen. You're... Um your veins that actually feed your digestive tract can actually get bound up and you can end up with a part of your colon that actually starts dying off. And that's not necessarily anything from your diet. There's a lot of uh, malfunctions that can happen. But I had a client who was losing uh, blood supply to her lower colon and she was definitely having some major issues. It was not from her diet. It was something hereditary and once they cleaned that vein and was able to open it up you know obviously everything got way better but when you do everything from a food perspective it it's just I would compare this because this is kind of more compu complicated situation if I can't fix somebody's squat online I'm gonna send them to a personal trainer to be hands-on with them just like if I can't fix someone's diet from an online perspective, I'm going to have someone work with them hands-on with a doctor and make sure that they can resolve it. Mm -hmm. Certainly. You know, um, I, I, I have a friend that I hadn't seen in a while, and he, I think he just turned 40 a year or two ago, and uh, he's, he's somebody who's very cautious. He, he definitely likes to, you know, get, get consultation when he needs it. And, and everybody knows that when you turn 50, you're supposed to get a colonoscopy, which, which is critically important. You know, colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death, and it's, it's the most preventable. Uh, you know, up to 80% up to cure rate, if you catch it early enough, if you don't, then it metastasizes like anything else, and you're just done. So early symptoms are definitely something to pay attention to. Uh, but he's, he was 40 years old and decided, you know, whatever, maybe his insurance company just covered if he wanted it. So he's like, well, I'll, I'll just get one anyway because I have a little family history of, of issues. And, and they caught a precancerous polyp. And, and, I, and, I, and I've known people who have died of colon cancer as early as in their 30s. And uh, they said, yeah, if, if you had waited 10 years to the recommended age of 50, like you, you would have had colon cancer. And, uh, you know, maybe you would have caught it down the road and you'd be fine or not. But at, at this point, it was just simply a little, basically, you know, it's kind of a larger biopsy. Take out that polyp and, and you're done. But now he's aware. And if his body just naturally, you know, produces these, if that's, if that's a, an issue with his DNA, his genetics, you know, now he knows and he'll get scoped more often and, and he'll be fine. So, so again, you know, guys, these are things that uh, we want to make sure that you can 
create any, any kind of a, a resolution that's possible through the food you're consuming, through eliminating things that may be irritating your GI system. But, but if you have serious symptoms, it's, it's definitely worth getting checked. I just remembered the name of that girl's diagnosis. It was uh, ischemic colitis is what okay. she had. Absolutely. It took me a minute. It's been quite a few years. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are other things. You can, you can even have nerve issues uh, where, where your GI system is not innervated quite as much. And so motility goes down. Uh, low thyroid can even do that. So, so all kinds of reasons to, you know, work on it yourself, take it seriously. But, but when you need to, to go that extra mile and at least have a doctor, you know, on board helping you, that's, that's very important. So uh, you guys stay tuned. We got one more episode to wrap this up. We want to talk about exactly what you can do to you know, prevent all of these things, hopefully never even have to deal with these. So we will see you next time in Contest Prep University.